Hello, everyone. Good morning. Really excited to be here. Um, two weeks ago, a current analysis issued their assessment of SDN vendor landscape, and uh, they noted uh, that Nuage Networks was very strong and uh, at number one position, tied to number one position. They also noted that Nuage is unique in its ability to provide SDN network automation, not only in the data center for all workloads, but also between data centers to the public and SaaS clouds, as well as to the wide area, to the remote locations, to the branch networking, as in SD-WAN. Likewise, all leading analyst firms have noted our comprehensive capabilities that we offer for automation end-to-end. -end. And most importantly, our customers have recognized the capabilities that we provide end-to-end. -end. So this is fantastic validation of the thesis in which the way we started doing automation end-to-end -end, uh, in order to solve the meta problem of connecting users to the applications wherever they might be, private or public cloud. We have been at it since the very beginning. We have over 100 customer deployments, both for the branch uh, automation as well as data center automation. Um, and we have learned a lot. Uh, we have fought hard with two 800 pound incumbent gorillas, um, and we have prevailed in many cases. Um, but also, we have partnered with our customers to really take some learnings. And this morning I want to share some of those learnings in terms of what it is that the customers are really caring about, what are the key considerations in, for them to select and deploy an SDN and NFE platform. And this morning I want to focus on the SD-WAN component and what it takes. So uh, with that, let's get started. By all accounts, uh, we are in the midst of the fourth industrial revolution. Um, you know, the physical and the digital worlds are fusing together thanks to all the digital tools that we have at our disposal, all enabled by cloud. And it is quite incredible, the, uh, the complete experience that we get. Of course, at the heart of this is the network. And it is network that is making this possible and we have to automate end to end, whether it's the smartphones, whether it's the variables, whether it's the self-driving cars, or whether it's the physical stores that are completely automated, we have to make sure that the end to end, the entire chain of network is automated because it's the heart, it's the engine that makes this and makes this whole thing possible. Now, in the context of SD-WAN, focusing now on SD-WAN, we recognized from early on that network was in the way. It was slow, it was complex, extremely vulnerable, um, and limited in terms of the capabilities it offered, and of course, expensive to operate. Um, so the desired end state really is to go from there in order to deliver that incredible efficiency through automation is for it to be on-demand self-service. It, it needs to be simple, not simplistic, very important. Um, provide full visibility and security. And it has to be boundaryless, as in it can't be limited in terms of what it does and where it does the automation. It needs to be flexible. And ultimately, it has to make economic sense for the service provider or the enterprise that is embarked upon this digital transformation. So how do we get there? What's the recipe? Well, there are a few considerations that are very important. Technology is, of course, very, very key. And, you know, it's something that you focus on first. And I want to talk about that. But then operations, the business continuity, whether it makes the business case. And finally, the partnership. And, and so, I'm going to focus on each one of these, starting with the technology. First and foremost, it's critically important to choose the right scope. What do I mean by that? To do the automation, understanding that we want to connect users or things 
anywhere to the applications that might be in private or public cloud, you can't limit your focus of automation to just narrowly focusing on the data center and doing automation in the data center or narrowly focusing on SD-WAN. In fact, I'd, we'd argue that SD-WAN, the definition of SD-WAN is rather limited because SD-WAN evolved from the definition being branch networking as it had been delivered was static. It hadn't done any innovation for two decades and it needed a refresh. And so vendors were focused on delivering branch networking but that's a narrow focus, we argue, because what it is, is it's not only branch networking, but users are highly mobile. And, and what that means is that all the users that are connected, whether they're in brick and mortar branches or they're in kiosks locations like here, they all need to be connected flexibly and the policies have to carry with them to the applications that they are accessing, whether they're in the SaaS cloud, public cloud, or the private cloud securely on demand and easily. And I say securely because software-defined security is also critically important. You can't automate networking in the data center. You can't automate networking in the wide area and leave security behind. We can't have the same security processes and have a perimeter-based security that's just not sufficient. We have to bring the security along by leveraging what we deliver through SDN, which is to say, with the right SDN model, you have a declarative policy-based automation. And when you have that, you're centralizing, centralizing the intelligence. You have full knowledge of every container workload, every virtualized workload, every bare metal workload in the data center, as well as any of the branches, wherever they might be. When you have that centralized intelligence, there are things you can do to really make security highly agile. And I'll talk about that. Next is choosing the right technology, as in the right platform. So I already mentioned it's about connections from wherever users might be to the private and public cloud. But also important is the capability in other words, there are VPNs today that offer layer two connectivity. We can't not offer layer two. We have to offer layer three and layer two connectivity as a service because that's what the enterprise wants. Whether it is connection to the public cloud or the SaaS cloud, that has to be done easily and it has to be the same governance that, you, that the enterprise is employing for their private cloud, for their branches, has to be the same exact governance network-wise for what they're accessing in AWS, in the VPC, or in Azure, or GCE. It has to have built-in security. That's stable stakes. So what I mean by that is East-West security, L2 to L4 security has to be built in the product, in the solution. And then it has to be agile with the declarative policy-based automation. It has to be scalable. It can't be you know, a, a single data center or few branches solution. It has to scale. And that's where this discussion and the selection of the right technologies and the right protocols come in. And finally, it has to support service chaining flexibly. So first and foremost is the right scope and the right platform or the right technology. Now, it's easy to focus on that technology and you know, forget about, because it's the shiny new thing, and forget about what the operations folks care about. What the operations folks care about is how am I going to manage, maintain, and understand what to do when there are faults in this network? Because we are talking about an overlay technology. And when you have an overlay technology and there's a fault in the underlay, what happens? How do you do the correlation? If there's a fault in the router or a link in the underlay, what are all the services that have been affected and impacted? And what if we needed to do an upgrade of the underlay somewhere? What does that mean? And how should we plan for that? So with regards to, um, I got the slides in a bit of a um, misorder here. So 
with, with regards to, uh, and I'll come back to that, uh, the assurance, but in terms of the security, as I said, not only is it important to have the visibility and analytics, but being able to show exactly who's talking to who in the network. And you can show that only if you're in the data path, both in the branch as well as in the data center, and be able to aggregate that for reasons of compliance. Be able to actually hit and understand that if the ACL counters are being uh, you know, threshold, the, uh, it's crossing the threshold of the ACLs, that means there's a port scan of some sort going on. This particular branch or this particular workload is under attack. And when that's the case, what is the automated action that needs to be taken in terms of either quarantining the workload or being able to service chain the workload um, such that automatically a filter is applied and port mirroring is done to the heavy duty firewall that might be in place. End-to-end -end orchestration and service fulfillment is critically important. And what I mean by that is it's important for the APIs to be leveraged in a way that consume not only the existing service and domains, but also the new SDN and NFV. It's important to then be able to take that and design a service specification and publish that in however portfolio of services that you want to offer so that then when the order entry comes in, and this is the other thing that's important, API driven such so that it connects to the existing business tools. And when the orders come in, they're according to that specification that you have published. So a proper service orchestration, fulfillment and service design is critically important. Engine is important, but the ability to consume it and tie it to the old and new is also very, very important. This is what I was talking about. The slides got a little out of order here, but the service assurance, this is the correlation I was talking about, being able to get the service view, being able to do the fault correlation when there is a fault in the network or in the underlay, being able to get a full inventory of all the assets in your network, whether they are physical assets or virtual assets, whether in the data center or in the branch, critically important. Because again, it's the shiny new thing is great, but if you can't really manage it properly and appropriately, and especially when there are faults, and there will be faults, you need tools like this. And finally, the health monitoring. So it's reactive and proactive capability of managing this new technology. Next is about business continuity. So Here's a survey by Cato where they said most enterprises are not really going away for MPLS IP VPNs. <coughs> so what does that mean? It means that the shiny new thing can't be another network type, another VPN. It has to, and you have to provide the capability to not only do it over the top, but do it such that it gets tied to the existing VPLS or IPVPNs. That's critically important because most customers are looking to do this as the first use case. Most customers are looking to ensure that the multinationals that they're providing IP MPLS VPNs to are able to also pick up their off-net sites bring them over the top over the internet, but seamlessly connect them to their existing uh, IP and PLS VPNs. <coughs> Next is the business case. <coughs> so this is the other promise of SDN. Um, the agility, the programmability, the automation that is provided lends itself very easily with the right platform and the right SDN for customers, for service providers to be able to deliver value added services. And those services can be provided either at the branch, 
you know, universal CP or in the CO, if it makes sense, or back in the data center. Mm -hmm. But it has to be done flexibly and the platform has to provide that capability to do it seamlessly and easily. Where it makes sense, take the common sense approach. <clears throat> Finally, it's about the partnership. A lot of service providers, they want to go to market fast, but it takes a long time to be able to help them get to the market quickly by offering hosted services. And this is where Nuage really benefits in terms of being able to leverage the mothership Nokia to provide that kind of infrastructure, to provide that kind of supply chain and procurement capabilities on behalf of our customers when they want to deploy and offer services worldwide. Being able to have that experience of serving very large customers, multinationals as well as service providers with a proper professional services portfolio and then ability to also train the service providers as well as the enterprise customers on this new technology. So in the end, it's really the whole transformation and the whole idea of taking SDN and NFP, applying them to a certain use case to transform how the branch networking is done, but keeping in mind the trend, which is it's not just about connecting branches together anymore. It's about connecting the branches for sure, but do it flexibly, dynamically, and connect them to the applications that might be in a private or public cloud quickly, uh, in a highly automated fashion, but also provide the service providers the tools necessary to operate this new technology by making sure that the service fulfillment capability is there, service assurance is there, and end-to-end -end security is preserved because micro-segmentation is not a term that's just applicable in the data center. Micro-segmentation is about creating micro-segments from the branch all the way to the application. HR can only talk to HR applications. That's what real micro-segmentation is. And finally, the continuity and the business case. Very, very important all around in order for SDN and FV to be applied to SD-WAN to bring it to the, and make it a commercial reality. Thank you very much.